Hello, this is John from GEDMathLessons.com. I'll tell you a little bit more about my uh, free website for uh, the GED Math preparation. But uh, what I want to do in this particular video is really um, get a good solid baseline review for your uh, GED Math skills for powers and exponents. So if you don't know much about powers and exponents, you're going to learn a lot in this video. So uh, this is a good start, and but it's not um, everything you need to know. You got to do a variety of different problems um, using the the uh, concepts I'm going to be teaching here. But what we're going to do is we're going we're going to go ahead and get you to um, understand these seven problems. So by understanding this, you're going to really you know upgrade your you know, understanding of powers and exponents. So that's going to significantly help you, but you, you like I said, again, um, you need to do a lot more practice because uh, this is much more expansive than the problems I'm showing here. But of course, we want to start from the beginning and let's go ahead and get into that now. Okay, so first thing is, let's start with problem number one. Uh, I want to go ahead and just get into the parts of a power, some of this terminology. So I have powers and I have exponents. So let's look at 2 to the 4th power. That's how we say this, 2 to the 4th power. So let me kind of write this a little bit bigger. 2 to the 4th power. Okay, so this, if I wrote that, would mean, you would say how? 3 to the 7th power. But what does this mean? Okay, well, 2 to the 4th power means that we're going to multiply this number here, whatever the bottom number, and we write it bigger than the smaller number, okay? This bottom number is called the base, and this little number up here is called the exponent, okay? So all together, collectively, everything combined together, we call it a power. We, we um, refer to it as a power. But what does it mean? 2 to the 4th power, it's very simple. It just says, it just means take the base, whatever whatever that is, and multiply it by itself this many times. So that means, okay, I got 2, all right, I'm going to multiply it by itself 4 times. So just go ahead and write out 4 2. So that's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. All right, so this is a total number of 4 2s. And when I multiply them together, I get what? 2 times 2 is 4 times another 2 times 2 is 4. So 4 times 4 is 16. All right, so 2 to the 4th power is equal to 16. And that's it. Okay, that's the concept of powers because powers really save us time. Imagine do, figuring this out, 2 to the 115th power. And you would have to sit there and just multiply 2 over and over and over and over again. By the way, this would be a very large number. But fortunately for us, we have calculators that can calculate this for, uh, for us. So the whole idea be behind powers and exponents is to take very, very large numbers or very, very small numbers and be able to work with the rules of exponents. And that's what we want to focus in um, uh, this particular uh, video, just kind of get you a sense um of these particular rules. All right, let's move on to our second problem here. So x plus 3 squared. So this is a power. Now, in this particular power, if you notice the rest of these things, we have uh, variables involved. So you're like, well, there's no numbers. What does this mean? Well, th it means the same thing as the previous problem. This is the base, OK, and this is the exponent. So the base is x plus 3. So we're going to take that and multiply it by itself two times. So we would write this out, x plus 3 times x plus 3, okay? And that's it. So x plus 3 squared just simply means that x plus 3 times x plus 3. Now, in algebra, you can actually um, uh, take this a step further and multiply these two guys together, right, using something called the FOIL technique. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but these are all things that you can learn in my free math course. But again... What I want you to do is just get a fundamental grasp of uh, the terminology and the and uh, of the rules. All right, so let's go forward. Now, the next problem here, I have x squared times x to the fifth. All right, so here is the way this works, and this is really really important. When these bases, okay, or the bases 
are the same. Here I have an X, I have an X here, okay? When you have the exact, and I mean the exact same base and its multiplication of powers, I have one power, let's kind of look at this big picture, I have one power being multiplied by another power, okay? Well, we have to ask ourselves, can I simplify this problem? Can I do this problem? Well, if the bases are exactly the same, all we do is add the exponents. So x squared times x to the fifth, I, can, I check the bases. Oh, they're both x. So the answer is going to be x to the 2 to the uh, 2 plus 5, right? So that's x to the seventh. And that's it. That's it. So let's just look at a, another example here. Let's say I had x squared times y to the fifth. You're like, well, can I do anything with that? No, you can't. This is as simple as you can leave this in terms of algebra, okay? Uh, same base, you can multiply. Now I'm gonna take this a step further. We'll do one more example here. What if I had x plus three squared times x plus three, oops, x plus three to the fifth, all right? Same rules apply. All right, I'm looking here. I'm like, okay, this is one power being multiplied by another power. So I check to see if the bases are the same. So I notice here x plus 3 is exactly like this one over here, x plus 3. They're exactly the same. So I can write my answer as x plus 3 to the seventh power. All right. Okay. Let's move on to our next um, problem here. Now, the next one is involves division. Now I have a power being divided by another power. Same concept's gonna be uh, apply here in terms of the uh, rules of exponents and powers. If the bases are the same, we can simplify this. If they're not, then we can't, we can't do anything really with, with the situation. So this is very simple. All we do is write, in this case, the bases are the same, right? I have X and X is I take the bottom number Okay, the one in the denominator, the exponent, and subtract it from the one in the numerator. In other words, it's going to be 10 minus 3. And that's it. So our answer is x to the seventh power. Very straightforward stuff. Now, if you're so far, you're like, okay, this is not hard at all. This is, you know, straightforward and easy. Well, you know, it gets a little bit more involved when you have something like x to the negative 1 half, y cubed to the negative uh, 2 power to the x, y to the negative 2 thirds. I mean, these problems can get much more challenging. Now you got to, you know, work with them and manipulate them. But they're all based upon how, the way I'm going to reduce this problem or solve this problem or simplify, rather, is still using these basic rules. So I'm not going to throw you into a problem like this until you get these this general concept down, okay? And by the way, the way I'm approaching this is the way you should be learning math. You have to start um, with like the first step, right, of learning math. You just got to keep kind of going up the steps. If, you, if you're like, oh, I don't have time for that, or like I'm impatient, I got to learn all this stuff fast, it's not going to work, okay? So just get the, fun, the fundamentals down and build from there. Okay, but by the way, let me just say the one last thing. Um, you are learning a lot about powers and exponents if you just understand all, all these problems. You're going to be like halfway there. Okay, next problem. So now here I have a power, right? X squared is a power. All right, and we're taking it to another power. So this is a power to like a power, right? Or power to another exponents. This is actually pretty easy right here. All we need to do is multiply. Multiply these two numbers, the two exponents. So the answer here is x to the 14th. Straightforward. So, so far I haven't done anything overly complex. Okay, it's been either adding numbers, subtracting numbers, multiplying numbers, very straightforward. The issue is going to be remembering these rules and then, you know, that's only comes through practice and then being, and being able to do more challenging problems. Okay, now let's take a look at x to the negative 3. Well, there's nothing going on here. They're like, well, I don't see any other numbers or, you know, what can I do? Well, we have to understand when we have, let me write it this way, a base, a base to a negative exponent, 
all right? So that's what we got going on here. We have some base x. It can be anything. It could be x plus 3. It could be y. But the exponent is a negative value, negative 3. So what does that mean? Well, this is what this, uh, this is how I want you to interpret this. A base to the negative exponent, what we're going to do is, uh, the answer is this, 1 over x cubed. All right, I'm going to explain this. So if you, let's just look at the pattern here. x to the uh, negative exponent, I rewrote that. I basically put this down in the denominator of a fraction, and I changed the sign from negative to positive. Just so look at the pattern, right? So let's say if I had y to the negative fourth, that would be what? 1 over y to the positive fourth, okay? If I had x plus z to the negative 2 power, that would be 1 over x plus z squared. All right, so hopefully you kind of get the pattern here. But let me explain this in more detail. Now, x to the negative 3, any number we can write over 1. If I want to kind of look at this as a fraction, I can, I can write it like this. For example, if I said 5 times 1 half, how would you do that problem? Well, you hopefully you know how to do that problem. It's a basic fraction problem. Definitely going to see stuff like that on, on a GD. But basically, you, you want to look at 5 as a fraction. So 5 is the same thing as 5 divided by 1. If I said, what's 5 divided by 1? It's 5. So I can write 5 as the fraction of 5 over 1, and I can do this problem, right? Multiply across, I get 5 halves, right? The point is, any number, x, I can write over 1 if I want to look at it in terms of a simple fraction. Now, hopefully you got that. And now, once we looked at that, we can better understand this negative exponent deal. Because this, this particular rule confuses students the most. So let me write this a little bit better. x to the negative 3 is the same thing as x to the negative 3 over 1. Now, the rule basically states the following. I can take this power, okay? Remember, the power is the base and exponent. And I can, if I want to change the sign from negative to positive or positive to negative, all I have to do is move it to the other side of the fraction bar. So in other words, right now, this x to negative 3 is in the numerator, okay? If I plop it down here in the denominator, it becomes positive. So x to negative 3, I can rewrite that as 1 over x to the positive 3 power, and I'm done. Okay, so that's basically what the rule says. Wherever your 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 um, power is at, okay, you could put on the other side of the fraction bar, but the sign of the exponent changes. So with this one from negative to positive. Let's do another one. How about 1 over y to the negative 2 power, okay? 1 over y to the negative 2 power. Now, what do we do there? So my power down is down here. So what basically the rule says, hey, I can relocate this guy up here, no problem. But if I do so, I have to change the sign from negative to positive. What, I just, it just becomes the opposite. So this is y squared over 1 or simply just y squared. Okay? So this is going to be a critical um, rule in terms of simplifying more comp complicated expressions. Okay, and that's why I spent a little bit of additional time on, on this negative uh, power. So let's go ahead and write this out. So this x to negative 3 is equal to x to the positive 3, and this is y. It's, and this is not just like extra explanation. It's very important that you understand why this rule is in place because you're going to be going from the denominator to the numerator, numerator to the denominator, back and forth, etc. All right, so... We got through this point of the video, and we're going to end with the easiest problem of all. So x to the zero power. I bet you 90% of the people out there said the answer is zero. <laughs> and that's logical. I'm sure I probably would have said that as well. Unfortunately, it's wrong. x to the zero power is equal to 1. Okay? Anything to the zero power, any base to the zero power is one. Doesn't make a difference what it is. I hear I'll write something crazy. Z squared times pi minus four tangent theta to the zero.
one. Okay, so <laughs> believe me, um, when you see anything to zero power, make sure this is a, a in fact an exponent, okay, and not being multiplied, and uh, the zero is acting upon the base. For example, if I had an expression x plus two to the negative three times x minus seven to the zero, okay, this zero was only acting upon uh, the respective power. So x minus seven to the zero is equal to one. All right, so this is the same thing as one times x plus two to the negative three. All right, so let's write this out actually. x plus two to the negative three, and we'll involve this last rule, this negative rule. So here's a little bonus question for you. See if you can rewrite this using that rule that we just talked about. All right, so this is the same thing as this fraction, but if I want to write this as a positive power, I'm going to move that down to the denominator. So this is actually 1 over x plus 2 cubed. All right, and if you got that right, then, you know, and you understand the rest of the stuff in this video, you're going to be like, you know, you got a great start in terms of powers and exponents. Critical, you have to understand, is it's extremely important in terms of uh, working with algebra, you know, um, and building your math skill set. So anyways, let me uh, go ahead and uh, leave you with a few pieces of information. Um, I do a ton of these type of videos to help you out for um, the GED, so please consider subscribing. And if you want to get notification uh, with YouTube of my um, current videos, you want to hit that bell button. Um, you'll see that in your account there. If not, you won't get it. And I'm doing lots and lots of videos like this. And then also, it helps me out if you give me a thumbs up, if you like the video. And then, you know, I try to read as many comments as possible so I can make uh, uh, more videos that you're looking for. Now, if you want to come over and take my free GED math course, I would definitely, you know, um, suggest that you do. Many, many, many people have gone through this and in, in passed, so it's going to really go through things much more thoroughly than I'm able to do in this video. Um, but like I said, doesn't make a difference where you're starting where you're math. If you haven't done math in 20 years, 30 years, or you failed math repeatedly, you can learn math and you can pass the, the GED. All right. But it starts with your education and your skills. So you got to start someplace. Hopefully this video is uh, one of those starting points. And uh, thanks for watching. I wish you all the best. Take care.